Is the sequel trilogy getting erased? The majority of the fandom has been asking for a retcon of the sequel trilogy, but we all know Kathleen Kennedy and Disney has too much pride to simply erase their trilogy. However, it may be getting replaced really soon. A common gripe among the Star Wars fandom was that the sequels didn't even feel like episodes 7, 8, and 9. People had no idea what the rebuilding of the Jedi was like. People had no idea what the politics were or even the state of the galaxy. The New Republic was less than briefly touched on as all we knew was that it was weak and taken over by the First Order. And what did we even know about the First Order? We really only knew that the First Order was just the Empire again. Stormtroopers and a scary man in a mask who answers to a mysterious man. So for Star Wars fans in the theater in 2015, it just felt like we were getting the original trilogy again, Rebellion vs. the Empire, which was renamed to the Resistance vs. First Order. While we would all have rather George Lucas's ideas, which was the Republic was also weak, but crime bosses were taking over and were led by Maul, and the new Jedi Order had to take them down. But George isn't here anymore. However, the man some people consider to be his heir, Dave Filoni, is here, and he is making the new sequel trilogy. Because of all the problems and confusion about the sequel trilogy, people were very confused about what was going on in the galaxy at the point where the sequels took place. There were so many questions but little answers because Disney didn't want to go into politics in the movies. This led the audience to feel like there were millions of stories to tell, between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. And here's where Dave comes in. Since he and John Favreau have been telling stories in between Return of the Jedi and the Force Awakens to really fill that gap, people have been joking that the projects of the real sequels in episodes 7, 8, and 9 really just feel like episodes 10, 11, 12. And that's pretty cool and works for everyone. For sequels fans, they still have their sequel trilogy, but for Star Wars fans who didn't like those three movies, which at this point is the majority of us, these new stories, five years after Return of the Jedi, are like the sequels to us. However, because none of these projects are in movie format, no matter how good they are, they will never scale to the excitement of theater releases that almost everyone enjoys more than shows. That all changed at Star Wars Celebration. At Star Wars Celebration, Kathleen Kennedy proudly announced that Dave Filoni would be making a movie that would be a sequel to his Ahsoka show. And here is where the cool rumors start. First of all, many people assume Luke will be in his new movie. Also knowing Dave Filoni, he may try to incorporate some politics and Coruscant in the movie. And Thrawn will be returning, which he is clearly a better skilled villain than Snoke. Most excitingly, this new movie is rumored to be called Heir to the Empire. Heir to the Empire was a book which released in 1991 by Timothy Zahn. And that book takes place five years after Return of the Jedi, where the New Republic has fragile control of the galaxy, and Thrawn comes in from distant parts of the galaxy and strikes to gain power. Do you notice any similarities? When Moff Gideon was talking to the Shadow Council, they all expected Thrawn to return very, very soon. So Dave's movie will be very similar to the Heir of the Empire book. And if you have not read that book, it's truly amazing. So is the whole trilogy of books. This movie also gives us the opportunity for us to see Han Solo again. Seeing young Han Solo is more possible than you think. We all know the deepfake technology that was used for the character of Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian Season 2 in The Book of Boba Fett. However, this technology is way better now. The fifth installment of Indiana Jones... The Dial of Destiny is releasing June 30th, and a small portion of the movie will go back in time and show some point of time in Dr. Jones' life. During this time, there will be deep fakes on Harrison Ford's face to make him look younger. Now, while I haven't seen any clips of Harrison's face deep faked, the photos I've seen have been outstanding, and I will show them on the screen of this video. So it's entirely possible with this new technology that improves every day, that we could see Luke and Han in the movie. Now, when it comes to Leia, it's a little different. 
Since Carrie Fisher's tragic passing, it's harder to get her in projects because she's no longer with us. In 2016's Rogue One, we got to see Leia as she said the words hope. That was really difficult for Lucasfilm at the time. At the time, it looked a little odd. However, it should be less difficult going forward should Lucasfilm try to include Leia. While it may be a little more difficult, the thing is they don't even need Mark Hamill on set when they did the deepfakes. They got an actor who looked similar to his Return of the Jedi self, and then they put old photos and media to make it appear as Luke. This was, I'm assuming, also used in Indy 5, however I'm sure Harrison Ford was on set. So theoretically, I think it's possible to be able to see Leia for more than one word in Dave's new movie, as the bar keeps getting raised for what is possible with this deepfake technology. With all this I know, I think we have an amazing movie to look forward to in 2026. Dave has been very respectful to George's work and tries to do very similar things to George when making new projects. We also know that Dave regularly asks questions to George and asks him what they should do on certain things. Dave is truly an amazing person to have at Lucasfilm, and I hope his movie's production goes cleanly, and we all get an amazing story. And as I said in the beginning of this video, everyone will be happy because sequel fans will have 7, 8, and 9, and people who didn't like those will have this new, more closer sequel to Return of the Jedi with cooler villains such as Thrawn, and hopefully better plots and character developments under the management of Dave. It's also good to know John Favreau will be a producer of this movie, and while that doesn't mean a crazy amount of involvement, it's still good for him to have any type of involvement in the project. Star Wars is looking very bright with its future, whether it comes to games, shows, books, or movies, and we all have lots to be excited about. We just have to get past these next few months. The Force be with you. You know, it needs to be more like chattering, you know, like, like crying. And that kind of stuff, not this kind of...